So today we're gonna mix it up a little bit, go try and catch some small tuna. Small tuna fishing's been excellent. Everything that goes along with this California fishery changes from year to year. There we go. My favorite part about it is it's a hunt. You are absolutely hunting. These guys rely heavily on the dolphin school. Yeah, I think it's a dolphin breezing. Look yeah, straight right ahead. Yeah, right here, it's a breezer. I'm looking for one piece of light, one turn. This is your typical tuna fight right here, straight up and down. Cool thing is you don't have to be a yellowfin or a bluefin. Oh, you. <sighs> Solid Woo. fish. Thank you, sir. This is my favorite time. I mean, right now it's almost October, it's stable weather, really good fishing, light crowds. This is really the best of Southern California fishing. The greatest thing about coming out here every summer and seeing this fishery evolve is things change from season to season. Not just the fishing, the terminology, everything that goes along with this California fishery changes from year to year. So today we're gonna mix it up a little bit, go try and catch some small tuna. Small tuna fishing's been excellent and it's close. So weather looks nice, we just go have a fun day. Just go goof off and... So small tuna, you mean yellow fins, yellow fins and blue fins? Mix of yellow fin and blue fin. Find a kelp, we might catch a couple of Dorado. Not much yellow tail around right now. So this is my favorite time. I mean, right now it's almost October, you know? Stable weather, really good fishing, light crowds. This is really the best of Southern California fishing. Since everything changed in 2015 with the emergence of this big bluefin fishery that we have here in Southern California, new styles of fishing have also emerged. Our favorite, mine anyway, is always gonna be the big fish fishing. I love fishing those big fish on the kite. Got it, hold on, hold on, watch the indicator. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Another style of fishing that's really emerged since the big change in 2015 is foamer fishing. The reason everything changed in 2015 was the emergence of the anchovy. Anchovy equals foam. They ball them up really tight in these big balls, sometimes they're an acre, and they start foaming on that stuff like crazy. And then there's what I would call traditional Southern California tuna fishing. And that, of course, revolves around our live bait fishery. You ready? Yeah, please. This guy's about to get smashed. There we go. There we go. A lot of this oh, one oh, too. Oh. We got bit on the sinker rig too. Did you get him? No, nah, he's not. Uh, now nah, it's going. Here we go. Oh, that was off. Awesome. Oh, no! He missed it. You get him? Nope. No freaking way. No way. I don't know how. How is that possible? You're bit off. Oh, I got a hook. I know shark. How. That, I didn't think this was a shark, though. God, that didn't run off like a shark. No, this ran off like Dude. a tuna. We are not good at fishing. There is so much fish under the boat right now. I know, and I'm with a microphone. Biggest thing in my eyes that's changed is the way these guys fish for the tunas and all the boats have changed. Back in the day when we were doing this bait fishing, I didn't have a thousand horsepower behind me and a 37 foot rocket ship that I was running around in. That was more of a slow diesel boat, you know, 20 knot cruise. Now we're running around in the 37 CV 50 miles an hour, running and gunning, chasing bird piles, chasing fish around, and being able to move. And that's what these guys are doing now. I think we need to, you can see the, it's a big school. I can see the color in it right now. Yeah, let's go try. I think we need to get on that other side of them. Yep. It's definitely a big school. You can see, I can see them on the surface breezing right there. Rush, throw it. I'm bit. He's there. Get him. Oh, that was a good one. Throw bait in there. We need him. Now they're going nuts. <sighs> Looks like some bigger ones came up. Yeah, there's definitely some good marks in there. They're moving, just moving quick, huh? I don't know. They came. Dude, this came guy's up good. And... Going straight to the bottom. 
And he's not even trying to stop. Can you tell the difference in the fight between little blue fin and yellow fin? That's hard. When they're the same size. That one looked like a blue fin down deep. It does look like a blue fin. I was thinking the same. Oh, I might have just caught some a yellow. flash of them. Yeah. Water's kind of off color, isn't it's it? It's dirty in here for sure. And that guy's at the end of the leader. You can barely make him out. I know. Well, maybe it is a yellow fin. Decent one. Thank you, sir. Oof, not a small one, huh? Look at that circle hook. Right in the corner where it's supposed That's to be. That's why we fish them, man. That's why we fish them. There you go, big dog. Hard earned. What an awesome fish, man. You know, before the big blue thing came, this was it. Oh, this dear. is what we did. And we, I mean, obviously loved it, you know? I feel like the big blue fin's kind of taking some of the focus off of these guys, but I don't know, I'm okay with that. You know, one thing in the fishing world, you know, everything comes full circle. And it can change overnight. Did I mention these taste good? When you leave the dock every morning, you gotta start somewhere. So you pick a zone, whether it be from intel you got the night before, whether it just come from instinct. Once you get to the zone, you're gonna start glassing. You're gonna start looking around. You're basically hunting now. My favorite part about it is it's a hunt. You are absolutely hunting. When we get into the zone, I start seeing the life I wanna see, boom, I'm in the tower. And when I'm in the tower, the gyros are on my face. One of your best indications of fish is gonna be birds. I'm looking for one piece of life, one turn, not just flying around. He's gotta be in there, he's gotta be wheeling. I see him flash. Okay, he sees something that I don't. Let's catch a fish here, Rich. He's there. Got him. Sounds like a tuna fish. How you feel there, buddy? It's like a little tuna, about what we're looking for. Cool thing is you don't know if it's gonna be a yellowfin or a bluefin. They've been all mixed together in here. Is that normal or where you get in, like some will be bluefin, some schools will be all bluefin? Usually it's segregated, you know, but it does happen for sure. It's kind of cool when you don't know what you're gonna pull up. He came right to the boat originally, but now he's pulling like a little bit bigger. I'm gonna guess bluefin. The way he's fighting? Mm -hmm. Now this great fish, if you could pick one to eat, which one would it be, yellow or blue? You know the answer, buddy. <laughs> we get so much of that blue fin, I go crazy for yellow fin on the grill. Well, you were telling me earlier, you like that blue fin and pokey better. Yeah, raw, blue fin all day. Because of the fat? Yep, and then grilled, or what could you eat the most of, you know? Because I can eat that grilled yellow fin every night. Right. Yellow fin. Yeller? Yeah, nice see the bottom yellow. fin's got the gold in it? Yeah. I mean, look at that great of fish, man. That's a nice fish. And that's not, I mean, that's, I'd Come say that's one more time. average. He's not even on the bigger end. Right. Eyeball him. Thank you. Nice fish. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Beautiful great of fish, man. Great gaff shot. Thank you. you. Like that? I do. I expect nothing less from my man, Captain Ross. Yeah. Gotta do something for you, buddy. How about catching one for me? One thing that's different here than back in the Keys, these guys rely heavily on the dolphin schools. The dolphin schools, just like in Panama, just like Costa Rica, they tend to hold schools of fish underneath them. A lot of times yellowfin will, will be with dolphin and they travel together, we think, for safety, but they also eat the same food, they like the same kind of water. So there's a lot of symbiosis between the tuna and the dolphin. Right next to us. Is that a breezer right there? Yeah, I think it's a dolphin breezing. Let's yeah, right ahead. here, it's a breezer. Throw it, Rush. Oh, right oh, there. Oh, that's close. Meters are good. 
Leaders are good. I just retied this one. Bit. Nice, buddy. Nice. They're blowing up like I threw I quite a bit. Up. Now that's tuna fishing, huh? That's right. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, I had to get with it at some point, right? They've been so weird all dang day. Well, they're with it now. Dolphin don't lie, I guess. Not when they got birds like that on them. Baby's swimming right to the boat. Perfect. Oh! No! It just came off right freaking there. No, they're still boiling. Get a bait. My hook came off. They're all around us, bud. Oh my gosh, they're erupting. Where'd you just see them? You're Hi, there. I'm tight. Oh, now he's going right over you. You're good. Which way? You I'm here. You're under me. You want to know something that's weird about this season for us? What's that? We never have seagulls offshore and we never have seagulls on offshore fish. I mean, one or two, look around. Any idea why? No clue. It's always turns. And this year we've been finding jumbos underneath seagulls. Lack of french fries on land? Uh, popcorn deficiency? I don't know. I swear I forget how hard these smaller fish pull. They pull hard. I'm gonna need a gaff here pretty soon, Richie. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Hefty. Here, they're still under. Let's go get a bait in the water. There you go. There you go. Thanks, brothers. Oh, and dude, this one is another just awesome fish. I hate to sound like a broken record. I think this is the biggest one yet, Rush. You think so? Dude. He gave you a little tussle there. Oh, yeah, that is a nice one. These are not your 20 pounders. Well, you said you've been catching nice ones, right? Yeah, but I didn't have to pull on <laughs> That's weird. All laying on up. it sleeping, huh? All bunched up in that kelp like that? That's strange. Babies too, huh? Yeah. See the white face on that guy? Yeah. I didn't see anything under that kelp but sea lions. Look like me. <laughs> Probably a white shark around. Yeah, that might be it. Because they definitely didn't look. They're right back on it. They don't want to leave that thing. One of your best indications of fish while you're glassing around, and that's going to be your patties. Those are your kelp beds. And you might see a bird sitting on top of it. You might see the actual patty itself, but you can't run by one and not check it because nine times out of 10, they are gonna be holding fish. These days, we do spend a lot of our time with big fish fishing. With big fish fishing, you're going elephant hunting. And when you're going elephant hunting, you don't stop along the road to shoot a couple of doves. You gotta be hyper-focused. Typically, we don't even take bait. And I prefer it that way. It eliminates distractions. You'll run by patties and there'll be Dorado jumping out of the water. Sorry, that's not the game we're playing. Today, I'm happy to stop on a patty and catch a kelp. Rush, yeah. just toss a bait on this kelp really quick. I've seen three blow-ups on it. It looks like tuna blowing bait out of the kelp. I kept seeing blowouts when I was looking for the dolphin in the glasses. There he is. Nice. Oh, nice dodo. Big one? Yeah. The one that came out of that kelp bull. looks really good. Out of the bull. Nice work, dude. Acrobatic bull. That's a nice fish for California. That's a nice fish for anywhere. It's a good fish. Yeah, it's a nice one. I thought it was a Looks like a bull, but then I thought I think it's a cow. I think it's a bull. Looks like a bull to me. Yeah. There's a nice one right behind it. I know. I saw a few of them. Really come out. nice one right there. You see it? Yeah, right here. Should I try to hook it? Oh, I think I found one, Richie. Definitely think you found one. <sighs> hey, I'll just walk with the gap and fish. Such a nice mixed bag this time of year. Tunas, dolphin. 
Nice. Oh, nice shot. Stony, that's a good mahi. Stony, that's a beautiful mahi, brother. You know what that'd be good for? Remember that video we were looking at earlier? With the, uh, when they took the skin off and cooked the whole fish with the head on it. Oh yeah. Perfect size Yeah, right we get there. this guy on, we get this guy on the smoker, no problem, huh? Perfect size. You want to come grab your fish? I got one waiting. I'm going to need you to return the gaff favor in a minute here. Hopefully. Nice work, dude. Yeah, this is, I love catching these guys. And that's just like the perfect size, perfect fish. You want to stroke this one here, Rush? Oh, before he breaks me off on the bottom of the boat. <laughs> Gold, so sick. Easy money. Nice shot, buddy. Not quite uh, the caliber of your fish, but I'll take them. Well, you know, you're the tuna king. Dude. Still a good fish. People come to you all the time, like, I love catching Dorado like you and Rush. And I'm like, we're not making that up. We go crazy to catch them, especially those big ones, you know? I love yeah, Have you made pokey with here. them? I've eaten them raw a lot. A lot of, like a lot of people just don't think about it. It's really good. I would think it would make great pokey. Well, is that a challenge? That is a challenge. <laughs> you know, know some, you know me well. I know a guy with a pretty decent pokey recipe. I think we need a bluefin to round this out if we can pull it off. I would do it, wouldn't it? Gosh, stuck at the, so, the, the SoCal, SoCal Summer Slam. Look at the colors. Look at them changing colors. So rad. That is a nice fish. Back home in Key West, you hear the term light tackle fishing. And all that really is, is you're taking these fish that everybody back in the days of, you know, Ernest Hemingway, and they used to chase them around with big heavy duty rods, big reels, and heavy tackle. But as everything has evolved throughout the years, you've learned that you can actually target these fish with lighter tackle. I'm starting to see that here in California as well. When we talk about small fish fishing here, we've got two setups. I've got like an ultralight setup that I really like, which is gonna be like a Fathom 12 or a Fathom 15. We're using 60 pound braid, sometimes 40, and then a lighter leader, 25 pound, 30 pound test. That works great until the fish are about 25 pounds. And these fish are too big for that gear, that goes in the rack, and then we go back to this kind of gold standard. I would say if you were gonna have one rig for Southern California, seven foot six, medium action rod, pen fathom two, 25 narrow, you know, some 30 pound leader, a pack of quality circle hooks, and you're in the game. Get it, Rush, get it, get it, get it, get it. 100% chance that baby was gonna get smoked. They are just blowing up behind the boat. This is your typical tuna fight right here, straight up and down. Doesn't matter the size, they all do that same thing. Come out from under the boat. You know, it's such a fine line with these lighter leaders and this great fish and these smaller light, light circle hooks. Yeah, we call this high casualty fishing. It's just part of the game. You're gonna get chew offs, you're gonna get broke off. There's just not much you can do about it. He's pretty deep. Still, he's just sitting down there really deep. He's buried. Sitting straight up and down. Might be a size grande. Just like an amberjack. Come on, get up here. Just straight, straight up and down. Which makes me think that that hook is buried in the deep. Dude, I am putting way too much heat on this thing. What'd you hook, buddy? Submarine. Been here for a while. Whew. I think he's foul hooked, dude. Can I bring you some dinner or something? It looks okay. a little goofy on that rock. Oh, I see it. Oh, look. That water is not clean. No. I wouldn't want to be a diver right now. No. We marked them and there's been some 50, 60, 70 pound bluefin mixed in. I, eh, that bottom fin looks silver, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's so deep. Let's, let's get them up here for a closer look, Rutch. You are beat it up, buddy. It's dripping off your nose. It's hot. It's been cold all day. No more. You know what is cold? A Tequila. cocktail I'm gonna pour you as soon as we get back to the house. I think you've earned it at this point. Way to go, pick out the oddball. Yeah. He's a bluefin. Remember we used to get excited about fighting a fish for a long time? No, I never did. <laughs> oh, what a battle. I don't care about a battle. Oh, we just rolled over on you. Uh, the bluefin tuna. 
looking out for me, big boy. Oh, you. <sighs> Solid Woo. fish. Yeah, I should have taken that. I should have taken that hoodie <laughs> off first. <laughs> Look at him. They're so cool, man. Every size, all the sizes. Man, what an awesome day. Yellowfin, bluefin, dorado. I mean, fish blowing up on bait. That is uh, about you, as good as it gets here. You definitely have it here, dude. This nope. summertime fishery you have is, I tell everybody back home, it's one of the best I've ever seen. Summertime's good, fall's even better. Man, this is our favorite time of year. All the guides and everybody, you can ask any of them. We all love this time of year. It's just so much fun. I mean, look how many boats we got around us. There's what, one boat in sight? That's this, it. This is awesome. That is This is it. awesome. Here, deal with your prize. I mean, take your prize. <laughs> Well, you know me, I'm a one and done kind of guy. <laughs> when Key West made the transition from basically trolling boats and head boats to more of the light tackle game, I was too young to really see it and be there to understand it. Now I'm here for this. I'm here in Southern California watching this transition unfold before my eyes. I've seen these guys make the transition from boat to boat. I've seen the customers make the transition from party boat to small six pack boat. It's just great to watch these guys out here kind of figure themselves out, figure the fishery out, and just live in this moment of transition.